Hi there, um, my name is Catherine Casey. I'm the Heritage Officer with Leash County Council, and I'm going to talk about um, hedgerows and their value for both biodiversity and climate change. So hedgerows are a valuable component of Ireland's cultural and natural heritage. Most Irish hedgerows were planted in the 18th and 19th centuries following Acts of Parliament that obliged landowners to erect permanent boundaries between their properties. Hedgerows along townland boundaries, though, often date mid to medieval times or even earlier, earlier, with some boundaries possibly dating back to the Bronze Age. Older hedges made up of native trees and shrubs have greater value in terms of wildlife and heritage with richer structural and species diversity. About 5 to 10 percent of the land of Ireland is covered by hedgerows. And when we compare this to just 2 percent covered by native woodland, we can start to see just how valuable hedgerows are in terms of native biodiversity and carbon sequestration. For many species, especially species that like woodland edge habitats, hedgerows act like mini woodlands in a landscape that's now almost bare of its native woodland cover. The most important element of the hedgerow is the woody species, the blackthorn and the hawthorn, but hedgerows can also contain varying amounts of other native shrubs and hedgerows trees are also important. And they'll also contain climbers like ivy, honeysuckle and bramble with a ground flora underneath. There are actually about hundred plant species associated with our native Irish hedges. So why are they important? Well, at the basic landscape level, hedgerows with their distinctive patterns tell the story of farming traditions over the centuries, and their loss removes much of the cultural and historical richness from the landscape. Hedgerows also provide a vital habitat and food resource for mammals, birds, and insect species. As well as being an important habitat in their own right, they act as wildlife corridors, allowing animals to move between isolated habitats. <clears throat> hedgerows are particularly important for birds. Of the 110 species regularly recorded in Ireland in the breeding season, half of them use hedges for nesting, food, cover for predators, shelter, song posts, perching posts, and corridors along which they can move safely. The nesting species are many of our most well-loved species, like wren, robin, blackbird, and song thrush, and also some that are becoming rarer, like the yellowhammer shown here, which depends on high quality, dense hedges for nesting. Hedges are also extremely valuable for our 99 species of native bees, and providing food, shelter, and nest sites, and bare ground to nest in and hollow stems. Hedges are a great food resource for our 21 species of bumblebees, providing flowering plants all the way from when the queens emerge from hibernation in February and March through to the winter months when ivy can be flowering in the hedges. Bumblebee nests are regularly found at the base of hedges in hollows where they are safe from predators and close to food resources. Hedges are also a very valuable resource of insect food for bats. Thick, tall hedges are ideal for bats as they provide sheltered commuting routes as well as feeding habitats with lots of insects. In urban areas, hedgerows contribute to the services such as climate regulation, sustainable urban drainage, reducing airborne particles and atmospheric pollution, <clears throat> and providing wildlife habitat. They also improve the aesthetic appearance of our built environment. Hedgerows can help address the urban heat island effect, which occurs when natural land cover is replaced with pavements, buildings, and other services that absorb and retain heat. With the heat island effect compounding warming from climate change, many cities will actually use more electricity and air conditioning than surrounding areas. Hedgerows can reduce this effect by shading building surfaces, deflecting radiation from the sun, and releasing moisture into the atmosphere. Hedgerows can re regulate the rate of flow of water within catchments, reducing peak flows and reducing the risk of flooding of roads and other infrastructure. In addition to water taken up by root systems, they can reduce sediment and mop up nutrients from the water as they intercept the flow. They can physically prevent water from rapidly getting to roads and other infrastructure. And while doing this, they can reduce, also reduce soil erosion. This management of water flow means that hedgerows are an, are an important nature-based solution in climate adaptation. Hedges can also provide livestock from getting access to water courses, preventing animal waste and pathogens from being deposited in rivers. They can stabilize banks, reducing erosion, and provide shelter to stock. By providing a thick physical barrier, barrier they can reduce the spread of disease between animals in adjacent land holdings. So we've seen that hedges have a lot to offer in terms of, of action for climate change. In terms of mitigating the effects, the main thing they offer is a very effective carbon sequestration. They can also offer protection for a huge range of our threatened biodiversity. In terms of adaptation to the impacts of climate change, hedgerows have a major role to play in regulation of flooding. By slowing surface water movement, they can reduce soil erosion and assist in the management of nutrients. They can help stabilize the banks of watercourses and in urban areas, they can help in addressing the urban heat effect. So if our problem is climate change, the problem that's presented by that, urban heat, heat, increased flooding and sometimes drought, 
soil erosion, loss of soil fertility, biodiversity collapse, and increased animal pathogens can all to some extent be addressed by hedgerows. We need more and better hedgerows to sequester carbon, to slow the movement of water and provide food, shelter, and nest sites for a vast array of pollinators, insects, birds, and mammals. Hedgerows are an effective nature-based solution in climate adaptation and in terms of supporting biodiversity that's so vulnerable to, to variabilities in climate. So what are the threats? Well, hedges are being removed at a very worrying rate, both for agriculture and for development. We need to strongly advocate for retention of hedgerows in rural, ur rural areas and in landscaping schemes in urban development. We need to ensure the developers audit sites and design with the biodiversity and climate action value of hedgerows in mind. Older established hedgerows are better always than newly planted ones. We really need to protect the hedgerows we have as the first priority before planning to plant new ones. Even if a boundary is replaced by a native hedging mix, it can take decades, if not centuries, to build up the habitat of an old hedge. So the ideal solution is to retain the existing hedgerow. Common issue is replacement of native hedges with a monoculture boundary of single non-native species, either beech or cherry laurel or grisolinia. As a non-native, beech supports about a quarter of the number of insect species that oak or willow do, because the local insect fauna is just not adapted to it. The monoculture approach also creates a long stretch of a single species with no biological or structural diversity, offering little in the way of habitat and food diversity for other species. Bad management also threatens hedgerow diversity. Cutting in the bird nesting season from March to September destroys, destroys nests, prevents flowering the following year, resulting in reduced pollen, berries and nuts, so less food for animals. The techniques of cutting, for example, using a flail mower on stems that are too, too thick to be flailed, like the photo here, results in splintering of the wood. Water then gets down into the stem, often resulting in rot, the loss of individual plants and a gappy hedge. Less good for flood alleviation, less good for carbon sequestration, and often the hedge is ultimately replaced with a fence, all just down to poor management. The shape of a hedge is also important to its wildlife value and its, its flood alleviation. Most wildlife prefers a tall hedge, shown here cut into an A-shape, tapering at the top, rather than what's so often seen, a stubby hedge cut low to the bank with a flat top and no trees. In terms of legal protection, under the Wildlife Act, it's an offence to cut hedges during the nesting season from March to the end of August. However, exemptions include road safety, fisheries, agriculture, and preparation for development. And of course, there's nothing then to prevent hedges being taken out outside the nesting period. There may, of course, be planning conditions to retain hedgerows and trees, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Under agricultural conditions, there are cross-compliance penalties for removal of hedges, and EIA screening is required if there's long -scale, large scale removal, but quite, quite large scale, really. So rather than legislation, then, if we're looking at national policy to protect and enhance, enhance hedgerows, how is our national policy? Well, the National Biodiversity Action Plan mentions that local authorities will continue hedgerow surveys, and many of them have done this. Many of them need to be repeated. The Climate Change Sectoral Adaptation Plan for Biodiversity aims to promote conservation through payment for ecosystem services and investment in actions that increase carbon sinks and biodiversity. So the climate mitigation impact of hedgerows has come into play there, really only in an agricultural context, though. There's reference to hedgerows in the current programme for government with a commitment to complete a national hedgerow survey and to review the protection, including the enforcement of reg relevant legislation of our natural heritage, including, including hedgerows, native woodlands and wetlands. Under the national planning framework, there's policy to ensure that integrated planning for green infrastructure and ecosystem services are incorporated into the pre preparation of statutory land use plans. So there's a strong requirement for local plans to provide for the conservation of biodiversity and green infrastructure. This is done, of course, at local level through county development plans and also through various non-statutory plans like county heritage plans and county biodiversity plans. There's a lot that can be done with good policies in the county development plan, but this needs to be backed up, of course, with implementation at development management and action at enforcement stages too. So there's many reasons to support the retention and integration of hedgerows as part of development sites to avoid removal and replacement with non-native monoculture species in urban or rural areas, and for positive planting policies for new native hedgerows and green infrastructure policies. At development plan level, policies need to be clear and backed up with data. Planners should be aware of habitat mapping projects, particularly hedgerow surveys commissioned by heritage and biodiversity officers in various counties. Sample policies are useful. This one came from Waterford. And development standards can also include a list of shrub and tree species that are native to the area, suitable for planting specifying that native plants of local provenance should be prioritized in all landscaping schemes. Some counties have also included green, green infrastructure plans in the county development plans, and these can be a very useful way to focus attention on specific elements of the resource. For example, this map and policies from Kildare 
for to the protection of particular mapped hedgerows and other elements of green infrastructure in a thigh. This approach does depend on the availability of quality data, though, so there's quite a big resource implication. At development management level, we need planning conditions to retain and enhance existing hedgerows and requirements for the landscape plans to incorporate new native locally sourced planting and developments. And enforcement is needed to ensure compliance with conditions relating to the removal of hedgerows and the use of native species. There is a need for better compliance checks and enforcement action on boundaries, boundary reinstatement for housing where planning conditions for the use of native species is ignored. Of course, this requires the resources and it also requires expertise. Climate change is a critical issue though, and hedgerows offer a simple and effective solution. It's increasingly important for planners to be familiar with the climate benefits of hedgerows and factor these considerations into their decision-making processes. As a next step, planners have the capacity to protect existing hedgerows through forward planning and appropriate policies in the development plan, properly resourced development management and enforcement action. Planners can also ensure creation of new native hedges for climate mitigation and adaption, adaptation through planning policy, green infrastructure plans and public ground plans. There's some sources of information here and at each of these we'll find signposts for future sort other sources. In many ways we know what's needed. The next step is to act. Thank you.